we're from the Dissonance Tech team in the Johanneke Lab, um, and we're presenting our project titled um, Examining Correlations Between Creative Technological Design and Consumer Cognitive Dissonance. Uh, so I'm Aria, um, and I'm presenting with Avigna and Moksha today. Avigna, are you here? I'm sorry about that. I think I glitched out. Um, so basically, our study is founded upon the dissonance theory, which basically is when your attitude conflicts with your behavior resulting in uh, discomfort. And attitude here would be defined as your internal morals, while the behavior would be your response to a stimuli. Uh, another important key term in our study would be ex uh, expectation disconfirmation. Is that recording or is it live? It's live. You can keep going. Don't worry about them talking. I'll mute them. Okay. Um, so expectation disconfirmation is basically when your expected outcome of a certain piece of technology leads to its expected satisfaction. So an, ex so an example of this would be uh, your Google Alexa or Google or Alexa working the way it's intended which will lead to discomfort. And we chose technology and dissonance specifically because social media is very common right now. And there are also new technologies being developed uh, during this era. So we thought it would be interesting to see how that affects our behavior. Avigna, we keep on losing you. Yes. Somebody else want to fill in? And... Yeah, so um, our study built upon dissonance theory, um, which is uh, built off of the work of the social psychologist Leon Festinger. Um, and it basically explores the idea that um, the idea of cognitive discomfort that individuals experience when they have um, conflicting beliefs and attitudes. Uh, so that basically means that what they believe doesn't necessarily align with um, their actions and like what they're actually doing. Um, so it's been seen that individuals that have dissonance tend to have a um, higher internal burden to resolve this discomfort by shifting their attitude and behavior um, in response to the discomfort that they feel. Um, so we can see examples of this with um, a couple of examples down here. So if someone wants to maintain a healthier lifestyle, but they still enjoy eating fast food, uh, they may be experiencing cognitive dissonance because their beliefs um, or like what they intend to do uh, with a healthier lifestyle doesn't necessarily align with uh, what they're actually doing, which is eating fast food. Um, we can also see this if someone uh, knows that smoking cigarettes is injurious to their health, uh, but they still continue to smoke cigarettes anyways. So when we began um, our study, we kind of looked at uh, current studies that involve dissonance and technology to see uh, what's already been done in this field. So we focused on the emotional aspects of interactions with uh, things like smart homes or autonomous vehicles. Um, and we found that this often results in uh, feelings like anger, regret, and guilt. Uh, we also looked into user experience with uh, things like Google Home and Alexa, and we explored the emotional dynamics um, that uh, interaction of technology and cognitive dissonance can play in our lives. Um, so yeah, this uh, flowchart down here um, kind of shows how we approached our um, literature review at the beginning of our study. Um, so we recently pre um, presented our poster on our study at the Society for the Neuroscience of Creativity um, conference in Toronto. Um, so this is our abstract that we presented our uh, presented our poster with. So 
Our study explores the contrast between consumer beliefs and behaviors in reaction to different creative technological project designs. Um, we developed a questionnaire to address this um, concept, um, and it presented participants with paired statements reflecting opposing values. I'll go more into this in our next section, uh, but we used participants' levels of agreements with these statements to calculate dissonance scores. Um, and we're currently working on data analysis um, to see uh, potential correlations between different technological subgroups and the dissonance scores that they generate, um, and we'll go more into that later as well. Uh, so this is our official uh, abstract here. It focuses on things like um, creativity and design, since that was the um, focus of the SFNC conference um, and how our study relates to that. Uh, so yeah, next I want to go into the methodology of our study um, and how we developed our questionnaire. So the basis for our questionnaire is the new FFI format and the Big Five Personality Trait Test. Uh, what this basically means is that we measured agreeableness, openness, uh, as well as suspicion with regards to various technologies um, in our study. So we presented uh, participants with statements that relate to, relate to these following eight categories. Uh, so safety, smart homes, autonomous vehicles, AI in healthcare, chat GBT, video games, and various applications and technology. Uh, we also included some general questions as well. So we asked participants to um, we presented participants with uh, paired statements, and we asked uh, participants to rate their agree level of agreement with these statements. Uh, so we used the 10-point Likert scale for this. Um, so one means they strongly disagree, 10 means that they strongly agree, and we asked them um, in a format like you can see here, and they uh, rated their level of agreement with these statements. Uh, so like I said, we have paired statements, uh, one that's directed towards belief and the other about um, an action. So this is an example here. I think that using ChatGPT in an academic environment is gaining an unfair advantage. Um, so that's more of a question that's directed towards belief. And then the second question here um, is directed towards action. I use ChatGPT often to complete tasks such as writing emails. So um, since these are opposing statements, if participants responded similarly to the opposing statements, uh, we can say that they're experiencing high cognitive dissonance about this topic uh, because they're agreeing with statements um, on the same level um, when the statements actually contradict each other. Uh, so this slide kind of explains our scoring methods and how we um, scored statements like these and participants levels of agreements with these. So like I said, um, if there's a lower difference between these statements, uh, that means participants are agreeing with statements that have um, contrasting values. So that means that they're experiencing a higher level of dissonance. Um, in contrast, if there's a greater level um, of a greater difference between the scores, and there's a lower distance that the individual is experiencing. So we take the absolute value of the difference between uh, the participants' level of agreements with each statement. Um, if we don't uh, pay attention to the order of the statements, and we take the averages. Uh, we take the averages of these scores um, for these paired statements, um, and do that for each category as a whole to see. Um, participants uh, dissonance towards each specific category. Uh, so as a whole, like I said, um, if you have a low average for a certain category, participants tend to have more cognitive dissonance towards the category uh, versus having a higher score on average means they have less cognitive dissonance towards this category. Okay, uh, preliminary analysis. So before uh, like we go ahead with our um, Preliminary analysis can have a little bit of a disclaimer because uh, we did not actually like get enough participants to um, make any like proper correlations and stuff. And when we like, when we were trying to do like some basic analysis on our data, the results didn't make sense and they were kind of just inconclusive because um, we just didn't have enough participants. Uh, but from a pre preliminary analysis, what we did find um, was was that the design of technology is the category in which both adults and adolescents experience the highest dissonance. And so this table on the right is a heat map. So the um, rectangles that are more darkly shaded, those um, are groups where the average dissonance was um, higher. So 
yeah, um, at the bottom for design and technology, both of those boxes are pretty uh, darkly shaded. So there was um, the highest incidence in adolescents and adults. Adults also seem to experience less dissonance towards video games, and adolescents ex ad adolescents experience the least dissonance towards um, chat TV. Uh, next steps. So this is a t uh, timeline of our project. In the spring, we uh, began uh, our project with a literature survey to learn more about the cognitive dissonance and technologies. Uh, and then in the summer, we started designing our questionnaire on job form. In the fall, we began data collection and we attempted uh, data analysis, which we still need to work on. And in the spring, we're, plan we're planning to finish our data collection and uh, our analysis so that we can start writing our manuscript in the summer. So we still need some uh, participants. So if you guys would like to take our questionnaire, just uh, scan the QR code and take it. Uh, we plan to collect uh, more data age, race, gender, high school income, etc. And we need your help. So um, you guys should help us finish our study and so we can begin writing our manuscript. So please take um, our questionnaire. Uh, we would like to thank uh, ASDRP, uh, Jahanikia Neural Lab, and our participants for helping us make this study possible. So thank you so much and please plan to take our study as well. Thank you.